And you're unmuted and you're recording. Thank you. You want to uh, What's wrong with you? Uh, what's wrong with you? Yes, yes, it's blowing. Do you would like to begin? It may do so. Yes, it is 10 o'clock, March 11th, 2024. I'll make a motion that the regular meeting of the Vera County Commissioner's Court come to order. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. And we are in session. I'd ask everyone to please stand for opening prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Moore is going to lead us in prayer today. Father in heaven, thank you for this day you've given us to gather together to uh, work with the county and to work with the citizens, Father. Thank you so much for their attendance here, that their interest is, is firm to learn more about how the county government works, Father. We thank you so much for Jesus Christ, who came and died for our sins, Father. Mm -hmm. Be with our road crews. Be with our first responders. Father, be with this commissioner's court as we make decisions regarding the county and the, the county citizens, Father. We ask for you to bestow witness, wisdom and knowledge upon us and insight, Father. Be with us and guide us and forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. All the comments. Mm -hmm. oh. no. Yes. Thank you. First on our list is Cindy Hathaway. Want me to go ahead? Yes, ma'am. Please. You got the floor. All right. So the purpose that I came here today was to talk about the tax abatement for the Bitcoin. I know that's a hot topic around here, but um, I just wanted to remind you all that in order to give a tax abatement, according to the comptroller's government side, it's to attract new business industries, encourage retention, business development, and promote capital investment. Now, I don't think that the abatement request qualifies for this because it's already a business here. Um, also, they have not created I have no personal knowledge, so I'm going to make an assumption. They have not created the 150 jobs that um, we were told that they would create at this time. Um, if you look on the Bitcoin's website, there are 13 jobs posted for Navarro, not 150. Um, also, um, according to Bitcoin's website, Bitcoin's website, they want to positively impact the communities that they touch, and they want to have a strong community partnership for a successful outcome. Yeah. So with the properties around the Bitcoin mining um, that will go down, just like the properties that go down in value around the solar farms, um, by giving them a tax abatement, 
you're going to lower your property taxes as well as those, you know, naturally will be lower around the factory because of the value of the property is going down. Anyway, that's about all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Teresa Hibbets. Hi, I'm Teresa Hibbets. And I urge all of y'all to vote no on the tax abatement. Voted no on the tax abatements for the windmills that provide the energy. And if you, they're going to suck up more than 412 windmills power on completion of build out. One gigawatt is their proposal. That is more than small countries. That's 750,000 pounds. That's bigger than Houston, Texas, and the power they're planning and consuming. How many windmills and how many solar farms is Texas going to build to supply all these crypto mines working in Texas? Because they're getting all the power and we're not. During the winter storm Uri, they got $126 million for shutting down, but ERCOT had to force them to shut down. Everybody on the Vero County Co-op is paying 25 years to pay back the amount of money that was charged. Mm -hmm. It was over $65 million. Mm -hmm. And then when they play with our electricity during all these times, when it's getting tired of uh, close on the grid and making my bill go up. It doesn't matter how high I've got my electric up in the summertime dying of heat because they're playing with it, just like ERCOT did, manipulating the electric market here in Texas. I urge you to vote no. I also urge you to vote no on any of the more reinvestment zone out there. They do not need to be anything else. Their proposal of using 1.5 million gallons of water is ridiculous. 45 million gallons of water a day, a month out of Lake of Arrow Mills. If you go to Corsican and Daily Sun, go in their archives, print out, put in drought, you're going to get article after article after article about the drought for 2006 and 2011. The influx of people into the rural areas, that rate cannot hold up. The back end of that lake is silted in. It is not 20 feet deep anymore. Mm -hmm. So I urge you to vote no on a tax alignment and no on any more reinvestment out there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Monica Vickery. And my name is Monica Vickery, and I'm a co founder for the Texas Coalition Against Crypto Mining. Uh, I'm asking Eddie Moore, who is my uh, commissioner to vote no on any and all future and now abatements for the crypto mine on 709. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Jackie Sabriki. <laughs> My name is Jackie Sawicki. I'm with the Texas and the National Coalitions Against Crypto Mining. I'm also part of the uh, National Sierra Club's task force on uh, policy task force on Bitcoin mining. I'm also part of the Center for Emerging Technology Policy. We are demanding that you guys vote no on abatements for the following reason. Number one, Don Boswell, if he's here, is the economic development director of this county. He makes $100,000 a year and he did not do an economic impact study on this. So having um, y'all consider doing an abatement without an actual impact study on the economics <clears throat> is ludicrous. Um, we know that Riot Platforms has this systematically live every single solitary step of the way in order to get their foot in the door, in order to get um, you know, the, the property purchased. So on our website, there's a page, Texas Coalition Against Crypto Mining, Myth Busting, please check it out. We have 22 months of record, open record requests proving that they have been inherently dishonest from day one. Um, we know for a fact that these facilities cost local economies Tens of millions of dollars, business owners are going to be cost uh, paying the bills. They're going to be seeing less business because everyone's going to be having higher electricity bills. We know for a fact that they do not create significant jobs. The facility in Milo County is the biggest in North America, and they have maybe 97 people. The Texas Blockchain Council, who is the lobbying group for this uh, for Bitcoin miners, they they admitted we are number one in Texas. 
They've only created 20,000 permanent full-time jobs in, in 15 million working Texans, 20,000 permanent full-time jobs. That's it. We know for a fact. Oh, and also in their press release, they, they, they literally said, we're going to be utilizing existing talent pool from Milan County. So they told y'all they're going to be creating jobs, but then they told their investors, don't worry, we're not going to, we're going to be using, you know, current people. Uh, they sued the state of Texas to withhold information from our records request. They sued the federal government in order to keep them from finding out their true energy consumption. They cannot be trusted. They will not be transparent. Why on earth should we be subsidizing, underwriting, and, and giving them tax breaks? We know for a fact that Riot Platforms is a failing business. In 2022, they lost $509 million. Last year, they lost like $70 million. They have never made a profit. This is a failing business. If you and I, if all of the people in this room weren't paying their electricity bills, weren't paying them to shut down when they brought the grid to the point of failure, they would already be bankrupt. A full 37% of their 2023 um, earnings, 37% came from you and I, the Texas taxpayers and energy consumers. Bitcoin is extremely volatile. It might be mooning right now. It might be 15,000 tomorrow. This facility is uh, connected to an extremely volatile asset. They might not even be here tomorrow. We do not need to be incentivizing them. We do not need to be paying their electricity bills. And we definitely shouldn't be letting them get away with $30 million tax-free. So that's essentially roughly what this abatement would do over 10 years. Steal, keep, withhold $30 million from this county that so desperately needs those resources. Um, again, they've been extremely dishonest. They've said from day one, we're going to be emerging pooling in their latest 10K filings for 2023. They state... Emerging pooling is a new technology and it might not be able to be at scale. So the first thing that they said when people were concerned about the noise pollution was don't worry, it's gonna be immersion pool. Well, guess what? They lied about that too, y'all. Okay. So the fact that they brought that they bought the house across the street from the facility is an admission of guilt. They they dislocated the people that lived across the street from them who'd been there for decades. They made them move because they knew it would be untenable to live there. $30 million is a lot for an indigent county. So please vote no and any other investments and abatements. Thank you. Right. Randall Powell. Yeah. I live on 3123, Lake Navarre Shores. I need to put speed sands up and no dumping on that property. That's with the racetrack, but they're doing all the racing. No, oh, yeah. it should just oh. be cleaned up, okay, trashed okay. out. Knowledge. Yeah, Thank we uh, we're working on uh, that. Okay. Yes. Um, yes, we are. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Item six, I mean number six is Brian. Is it Stephen Kroger? Ripping Kroger. Ripping Kroger. Ripping Kroger. Thank Kroger. you. Uh, and believe it or not, on one name. I'm here for the same reason he was talking about. Okay. It's the racing and the noise and the gunfire. The, the, right. the It's out of control. Mm -hmm. uh, last, just two, three weeks ago, the highway patrol came out there and they did a bunch of rest and all that. And uh, it's interesting enough, we asked Tanner for an entire year to come out there. He never showed up to a week before elections. Takes credit for all these arrests that these fine officers made out there just so they could live through it. And that's not I didn't like that at all. He won't be there this next Saturday, I promise. Not till the next election. The uh, the gunfire is machine gunfire. Rifles. You can hear them going on. Mm. I've called the sheriff over and over. He's called. Half these people in here called. And they just tell him, oh, when we get a chance, we'll send someone out there to private property. Well, we all live on private property. But I'm not out in my backyard shooting machine guns. And, and there's a lot of kids that live out there. They say they'll be done at eight, nine o'clock. They race till four or five o'clock in the morning, non stop. The, the camp, even the Navarro Mills at, at the campgrounds out there, they're already complaining, complaints. They're not coming back. They said they can't even, it's so noisy, they can't even sleep. And they're across the lake. Um, I don't understand how they can do all this. And everybody just says, well, proper, proper. They have the right. They can make all the noise they want. They can play all the loud music they want. They can shoot machine gun fire out there, and nobody will go out there. Nobody. 
I spent 38 years with the Dallas Police Department. 25 of them I was in the projects. It's never this bad. <laughs> this is way worse. Mm -hmm. Two times in the last month, I've had to draw down on people in front of my house. Mm -hmm. They were hiding guns and drugs in the bushes because they saw mm -hmm. the highway patrol down there, so they're trying to hide their stuff. Mm -hmm. I've had to go out there and say, hey, look, I'm with y'all, I'm arresting y'all. They lay down, they threw their guns in the car and took off. Flip the finger at me all the way down the street. Mm -hmm. A month later, I was trying to leave the neighborhood. It was six cars in the middle of the road. Everybody out with machine guns and guns. They're having a big argument. I got stuck in the middle of it. This is my neighborhood. I had to get out again with a gun. And they saw this crazy white man after waving his gun. I said, I'm going to kill everybody on the street. They jumped their cars, drove off. But this is it's scary. I, I got a neighbor that's got two young boys, eight, nine years old. Two weeks ago, some kids pulled down the street, pulled knives out, threatened to kill their kids. He had to run in the house, get his AR and come out. They drove off. And you call the sheriff. What are they going to do? Well, we'll go get there. We'll get out there. We'll get... They don't think they don't do nothing. There's nothing. Nothing's being done to stop this. This is out of control. Um, even in course of Canada, the uptick and all the racers out here spinning. On the, when they race out there, they come from five, six different states. So they come to course of Canada. You know all them black spin out marks you're seeing everywhere? Yeah. These are your people that you give permission to do this. Somebody's got to stop this. It, I, I, I don't, I don't know the answer, but it's to me, it's simple. Everything they're doing is illegal. You ask any sheriff officer out there, they'll tell you it's a drug fest, it's a gun fest. They're selling drugs, doing everything, but they're not going out there. Why? Why can they do that? And nobody's doing anything. They put a 25 mile an hour speed limit sign up. What the hell is that? What's that going to do? You know, it, 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 it's, I'd almost suggest y'all to, to get to know your local officers, these guys right there, because, you know, about two weeks ago, they got in car chases. They recovered stolen guns, 10 stolen cars. How come the owner of the property is not even being, you know, indicted? Those are stolen cars on this property. They're going to get in a shooting. They're going to get hurt. They'll get killed. Yeah. It's just a matter of time. It's because of the inaction of the county. They have to stop this. I shouldn't have to go out in my driveway with a gun just to leave my property. And it's not every day. Don't get me wrong. It's during race day. And it doesn't stop at dark. It goes till 3, 4, 5 in the morning. And it's so loud. As loud as I can talk, you couldn't hear me. And I have to listen to that. And my my window's shaking. And I'm not even next to it. And, and it's just, guys, seriously, do something. These little piss ant local law or whatever, you know, they're going to pay the fine and keep doing it. The only way it's going to stop you put a fence around that sucker. You put an officer out front and you shut it down. Just put two officers out there and check every single person and write them five, six tickets apiece. They won't come back next week. There's simple ways to do it. So we did in Dallas. We had the racers, two officers. We bought four or 500 tickets one night. City make $20,000. Everybody's happy. They don't come back. We're doing nothing. But God bless the Sheriff's Department. They came out two weeks ago. They did all the arrests. They did all the work. God bless them. What else can I say? There's something on the agenda that's going to address that. I hope so. It's going to end up doing what I don't want to do. But thank you for saying what you said. Yes. You don't have that. Larry Cockerham. Yeah, I'm Brian's neighbor, and he about said it all. I don't like the noise pollution and the, uh, uh, the, the traffic and all that. It's a big bother on the race day. It really is. Well, another thing with all the, the pollution that... They're blowing up car engines, there's oil and gas and everything going into the ground. They don't have bathrooms out there, so there's thousands of people just going into creeks and everything. All y'all drink water, right? All the water comes from the barrel mill. Mm -hmm. And it's going into the lake, and it's nasty. You can see the sheen on the water from all the stuff we're spilling. And I don't know, TCQ maybe should be contacted from Dallas. Let them come out here. I mean, and the first thing they're going to do is come after you guys. Because why didn't y'all do something first yet? That's what they're going to do. It's just out of control. It's, it's terrible. All right. Vicki. I'm Brian's a neighbor also. But it is scary. 
Uh, but when I know it's the, uh, we call it the race weekend, I, I don't want to leave my house. Because I don't want to go down no road. It's scary. Um, anyway, it is a horrible problem. Thank you. And it's this Saturday, so if you want to bring your grandkids up here, look <laughs> I'm sure they'll be safe. Yeah, right. right. And the rain doesn't <laughs> stop them. No. Debbie Weaver. I live right behind it. How big is that chair you're sitting on? It's a little. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hey, I need a booster seat. Okay, even for here, but go ahead. I live right behind it. And what's so sad, there's a late, little lady that lives right across the street from it. And she has to fight with them all the time. Oh, Sucks. But it's very loud. They're shooting guns up in the air. They do what the hell they want to. I might be old, but I'm getting pissed. Amen. Amen. My next door neighbor, there were needles. She's got grandkids too. Bunch of crap. I'm tired of it. And that's all I got to say about shit. Thank you. <laughs> Quit. It's the last name. Is it? Quit. Quit. I'm what, what's your first name? Tell me. Manuela. Manuela. Well, I thought that might be what it was. Right, see, same reason. They've all said, and I've been talking to Mr. Brewer for, for a year now. I just wanted to remind you, day after that first race, what your exact words to me when I brought up the situation, and I told you Ellis County did something similar, and that how they did permits, and your exact words were, this is not Ellis County, and we don't have the money like they do. Mm -hmm. And yes, you did, Mr. Brewer. I won't ever forget that. And you and I have not had pleasant conversations on the phone regarding this matter, even the last one we had. So that's why I emailed you the last time confirming that this was taking place today. But it doesn't cost money. You're actually going to make money getting permits from these people that are trying to do this. I'm fine with stage four breast cancer. I live down the road. I don't want to have to deal with this. I moved out to here in the country where it's peace and quiet. So whatever time God's going to give me that I can enjoy it, enjoy with my family. I can't even have my family come out. I mean, you know, they want to come out and visit. I can't because of this, because I don't want to put their lives in danger. Because once we go in the morning and get what we need to get, we lock down and we don't move from our properties until then. And all of us that live around each other are taking care of each other. And that's all we can do. So and hopefully y'all finally do something. And we would have uh, money for permitting if uh, we right. didn't give tax abatements to right. the <laughs> okay, whoever that it was number 11 on this list, it's something D, and I can't read a squiggle. Okay, I have attorneys in my court all the time that that's how they'll, they'll sign it. Uh, so I don't know who it was. Somebody will say it was you. Well, you'll have an opportunity to speak. Maybe Jan. D. James D. Brown. I don't know. Possibly. I can't read oh, it. I, don't, I, I signed it. Hey. I'm not here with the racetrack. I live hey. just directly south of it. And I cannot hear my windows vibrate. They don't run through my fence, watch out my fence, at the corner there. And so every time there's a rain, I stay up because they come flying out of that day where they're at, come to that 90 degree corner, and they fish tailing and spinning and like I said, I've already had one come through there. I'm waiting for another one. After it's all over, I got to pick up whiskey bottles, beer cans, trash, my bar dish, which I maintain. Even though it's the county, I maintain it, mow it, and everything. I got ruts in it after they come spinning, missing the road. And, you know, the 25 mile sign, y'all put one in the dish right where I live, but man, that's just the biggest. <laughs> Something's got to be done. It's, it's ridiculous. Right. Just like last night. They're not raced, but now they're doing parties over there. Mm -hmm. And the music's still after midnight. Yeah. It's, and so it's the automatic gunfire is out of control. Yeah. And no yeah. one's going out there to stop it. we got a sheriff's department that won't even go out there. So what are we going to do? Do I go out there? Do I go out there to stop it? I don't want to have to go out there. I shouldn't have to do that. And one time, I was down my back on my patio, and I heard this noise. I said, what the hell was that? And I got to look around and I found slug. And oh, I shot up and it fell onto my pad. Mm -hmm. And so something's got to be done about yeah. this. We'll, we'll get there. Okay. Uh, Greg, the younger? Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Thank God what I have to say it seems so important. Next, what's going on out there? Uh, I was here just commenting on the tax abatement uh, that's being proposed. Of course, I'm opposed to it. I I just don't see how it's a win for the county. I, I don't see how it's a win for Texas, as desperate apparently as our, our grid situation is. As several times, but especially over the course of this past summer, we've been asked to raise our thermostats to get serve electricity. And yet, we're bringing on the biggest energy hogs, I guess, that are going in the state of Texas. Not only electricity, but water. They are consuming huge resources and they're huge noise pollutants. They are not good neighbors. Yet they get the best electric rates. In fact, when ERCOT convinces them they should shut down because the grids become unstable, they start getting credits. So not only are they already paying ridiculously low power rates, much lower than you or I could possibly get, then they get credits. So ERCOT is actually giving them credits, and yet I'm paying a surcharge through my electric co-op still from the big grid failure and them having to buy energy at such a high rate Yet these Bitcoin people are making a fortune on these energy credits. Absolutely. I, I just don't see how it's a win. It's not. Not only for Nevada County, but, but Texas as a whole. And then they tout the jobs that they're going to be bringing. For one thing, those jobs haven't materialized in any of their sectors. No. And even the jobs that do materialize, there is no restriction on those people being green card holders or U.S. citizens, many of them are going to be H-1Bs. They're going to be here on visas into the United States because it's it's cheaper, frankly, for the companies to hire H-1B workers than it is U.S. citizens or green card holders, yep. which we envision those jobs should go to. Uh, any, any consideration where job creation is a factor. Um, anyway, that's just what I had to say. I appreciate y'all's time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. John, is it Blewett? Thank you, John Blewett. Yes, sir. Uh, I urge you to vote no on the tax abatements for the good of the county, for the good of the county. <clears throat> if memory serves me right, the commissioners took a bold stand against the high-speed rail lot because there was no benefit to Navarro County. And Bitcoin mine, as far as I could see, is a curse on the county for all the reasons that have been mentioned, electricity and water. I have a friend who is probably going to move because he's going to, there's going to be so much noise. Uh, once, the, once the mine fires up, he won't be able to sell it. I don't have so many friends that I can afford to lose. So aren't there roads that need to be fixed? Aren't there lots of other things uh, that would benefit the people of Navarro County? If you give them tax breaks, I just think that's a huge mistake and a great disservice to the people of this county. Please vote no. Thanks, sir. Kayla, Remy. Mm -hmm. I'm Kayla, and um, I'm opposing uh, this item number 24 on the agenda. They're trying to change the zoning from agriculture to industrial. industrial. They're wanting to put a solar farm on my road, which is southeast 3230. And I'm representing my neighbors that can be here and myself. And, I've lived on that road for 23 years and you know, we moved in the country for the peace and quiet. And um, the solar farms are just taking over, you know, that end of the county. And I just feel like they're too close to the lake and too close to residential areas. And um, my, my neighbor would be directly across the street from him, you know, would be the solar farm. There's already a substation right down the road from the other solar company. 
So, uh, you know, we're just concerned about traffic increase and our property values going down. And they're just an eyesore, you know, to look at. So I'm just asking, um, you know, that you vote no for the zoning change. That's all. Okay, doke. Mr. Back over here. That was our public comments. Uh, next up is our consent agenda, items uh, five through ten that we can individually, uh, if necessary, talk about them. Or if that's not a need at this time, we can approve them all with one motion. I move that we approve the consent agenda as a whole. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Moore, seconded by Commissioner Brewer. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Those are our regular agenda now. Um, item 11 is consideration of burn ban. Uh, fortunately, everything, for the most part, is green. Very, very I packed it green. Anyway, it looks good. Nothing could burn, I don't think, no matter what. Unless you put some fuel on it and get it to burn. Yeah, lots of fuel. But uh, anyway, I would say no action on that. Y'all in, in agreement with that? No yeah. action. No action. All right. Next three items are uh, regarding the reinvestment zone that we've been talking about. And uh, that is a public hearing for creation of reinvestment zone. Uh, 13 is a consider uh, consideration of approving the order to create and designate reinvestment zone. 14 is consideration of approving the resolution for tax abatement between Navarra County and Wright, um, Corsica County LLC. Uh, it is my concern, and I'm going to see if you guys reflect that, that we take no action on this. Everyone in favor of that? I'm in favor of that. Yep. Okay. I have a question. No action means what? We're not considering it. Thank you. Wait, but that's a, not a no. I have a question. Yes, sir. Does no action, does the voter no action today mean it's off the table for the future or is it just off the table? It, the it could come back up, but for right now, it's no action. Um, but that's not a no. I, I believe that several people here would like to know how their commissioners would vote. I know. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. I agree. It doesn't look good for them not to know where their commissioners stand. I know it's not the headline you want in the newspaper that you know we vote down tax abatements because we don't always. But I do think the citizens that are here, even if we're not taking official vote, deserve to know how their commissioner's going to vote. Is that can, are we able to do we, that? We can do that. We can do yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm asking our lawyer. <laughs> there's, there's nothing in the Open Meetings Act that says you can't voice an opinion on an action. I'm against it. As myself, I'm against it. I'm a nay. I'm against it as well. I won't say it loud enough. The people in the back row can hear nay. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that if it comes up again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, unanimous no. no. I just have one question about the big way. Yes, ma'am. I'm on the eastern side of the county, so I don't have direct information. Where are they planning to discharge their water from? We've been kind of that for 22. It would end up back in Richland Chambers. Yeah, that's oh, where the, right. that flow of water so naturally it, occurs. It, 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 and they're just going to discharge it back into the water? That's right. Okay. They're there in Clark and the Barrow Hill because we're in Chamber 2, but they're not stopping them. Okay. That's what the question was. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking that. Yeah. Item 15 is consideration of approving engagement letter for Navarro County Indigent Care Services by Kennedy uh, Attorneys and Counselors at Law. Uh, this is where we are. Uh, our, our money that we spend uh, and the state requires us to spend uh, for indigent health care. That is for folks who can't afford to go to the hospital, basically, is what it amounts to. Um, we are changing the, our structure and the way that we fund that. And uh, we are thus engaging these attorneys who do this all the time to help us 
with it so that we're doing it correctly, okay? And it's not just up and jumping up and doing it. So, uh, <clears throat> gentlemen, I, I haven't had a chance to visit with y'all uh, regarding this. I don't think it's uh, Terry yes. Jacobson here. Oh, no. Okay, he's, he's not here, but he's helping us along with that. He managed to find uh, these people and uh, recommended that we go ahead and, and engage them uh, to help in this process. So I'd ask for a motion, please, uh, regarding it. I make a motion that we approve an engagement letter from the Barry County Indigent Care Services by Kennedy Attorneys and Counselors at Law. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Brewer, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I was carried. Now, when I don't vote like that, that's a, that's a yes vote, okay? Uh, to to uh, join what they are saying, essentially. Otherwise, I will say, okay, I'm voting different. You know, I engage it differently. Number 16 is consideration of approving the mass gathering permit application. This is what some of y'all were talking about. Uh, we've uh, studied this to try to figure out what's going to be the best route and what other counties are doing is what we're going to do at this point in time. Uh, or uh, we'll, we'll see here in a minute if we're going to do it at this point in time. But, uh, you know, the thing is, and, and just so y'all will know, we have to deal with people law-wise uh, all the time that they're in the county doing stuff they shouldn't be doing out in the county. Okay, My property is out in the county. Uh, I shoot guns every now and then, but it's safely into the back end of the tank dam, so I don't have to worry about a bullet flying off anywhere. I'm very conscientious of that. I'm conscientious of the sound that it makes. And my neighbors, although they're you know probably 2,000 feet from me, uh, you can still hear a gun go off. So I've got what it takes to, uh, so you can't hear guns go off, but I still shoot my pistols and I don't have anything for that. Um, I try to pick a time when during the day when it doesn't bother other folks or was not apt to bother. And um, so anyway, um, one of the issues that we have that I have been concerned with ever since I came into office is the fact that the state of Texas doesn't really give you permission not to do stuff, okay? You can move out into the county. You can get out there and raise cane if you want to. You can shoot guns all the time if you want to. We can't have ordinances to do anything about it. Cities can, okay? So there's no ordinance for automatic gunfire, automatic weapons, machine guns. You got to have a 10 or 50 acres to shoot a rifle. They're on 10 acres. These are long rifles. You have to have 50 acres. That's the law. Hmm. Nobody enforces that. I got, just, I got 52, so there. That, that works fine for me then. I'm okay. so why, are, why are not they, the sheriff's department out there enforcing it? They came to my house five, six years ago and I was shooting handguns in my backyard. I got 10 acres and I had a berm and everything, so I was legal. And they said, okay, we're just double checking. You cannot shoot a rifle out here. They may, we would have to arrest you or write you a ticket. They told me that. Yeah. But at this track out there, they don't even go out there. They got a guy standing out there with an AR at the gate. What is he there for? Yeah. Two guys, I'm sorry, it was two of them out there where they are. They're not uniform. Mm -hmm. It's 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 scary. Come out Saturday. Come out and see it. I just want you to come out and see it. You will it will blow your mind. We tried to get Tanner to come for a year. He wouldn't come out. And he finally came out one day and he goes, Oh, it was a pull. That was a rainy day. It wouldn't even be crowd. It don't stop him. Just come out. Just spend one day out there. It'll scare you to death. Well, anyway, that's that's you know my contention is the fact that the uh, state doesn't allow us to do that, you know. But what we're about to do, we can do, and that's this uh, mass gathering permit and uh, all the stipulations that go along with it that we got from another county who has had to do that too. Yes, ma'am. There's no bathrooms out there. There's health and safety issues. I don't know if I've ever looked at a video. I asked Mr. Brewer the other yes, day when I talked to him. You video. can see what they're doing. They're smoking pot in the videos. Teenagers are drinking. They're flipping out of the cars, jumping and trying. It, it just... This, wow. what we're about to consider is a mass gathering permit that takes into consideration all of those issues. Okay. And it is based on three separate codes in our state law that they have to follow. It requires them 60 days before 
uh, the event that they have to make an application with the commissioner's court uh, and meet the requirements of the application. This is not just for this, but there are other mass gatherings that are about to take place in our county yeah. that could be dangerous, that have health and safety issues involved. Uh, this is a step in the right direction to help with this. Uh, there was two other counties that I looked at their mass gathering permits and we kind of went from there. Bob Schill, an attorney with our DA's office, helped me with a lot of information on this, proofread it, uh, basically cleaned it up for me and, and gave all the citations with the codes in it. And uh, this, this will go, we cannot put it into effect immediately. It has to be 60 days because they have 60 days to apply. What are so, the codes? What are their codes? Uh, I can tell you specifically. These are just finable codes. They're just going to pay the fines and keep going. Money for no, this? no. Is it, who's going to put no? Who's going to stop? This will give our sheriff's department the ability to go on the property and to shut them down if they're not meeting they have, the you requirements. Have a call, the you're calling about weapons being fired after they have the ability. They, yeah. That's a call, and they're not going because they're told not to. And they'll tell you, ask any sheriff's officer out there, they'll tell you. It's a drug fest. It's a gun yeah. fest. And they know it. Stolen cars everywhere. But they are not going out there. I have discussed this with the with the sheriff. They keep hanging yeah. up on you. They keep trying to hang up on you. They don't talk to you anymore. We'll get someone under when we can. That's all we ever hear. I, I, can, I can't speak to that with your dealings with the sheriff. Well, all I know is I've talked to the sheriff about this. And it gives him the right to go on the property to check these things out. Uh, they have to do this. Is Title IX, uh, Subtitle A, Public Safety, Chapter 751, Mass Gatherings, Texas Penal Code 42.03, and Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 265. So, uh, and I'll be glad you can look at this, but it should give us some teeth. It should give the Sheriff's Department a way if they're not meeting these requirements, if they don't have the bathroom facilities, if they don't have uh, their plans in place, for this, he can shut them down at any time and immediately. So that's that's what we're that's what we're hoping. I should bring for sure. What's the number of people in the mass gathering? The mass gathering is uh, more than twenty five hundred or more than five hundred, if it can reasonably expected that fifty one percent or more of those persons. May be younger than 21 years old. Oh, they're yeah, they are. yeah. So that gives us okay. There, yes, ma'am. Does this go towards festivals? Um, also, so anybody in the county, even right. cities, will have to. No, cities, it's not for it's not for incorporated areas. Okay, this is for unincorporated areas. City takes care of, of, their, own. of okay. their own. Okay, so. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Any other questions? Also, if you're going to do this, why can't you make them put in put in a permit for traffic control? That's that's a part of this okay. permit system. Traffic control, um, yes. parking, parking. Uh, parking. what yes. for emergency vehicles to get in and out? I worked in the city of Duncan for 33 years, and I was part of public works, and we made every vendor to come in to do something. They had to give mm -hmm. us a traffic control plan, mm -hmm. and we had to approve it. And if they didn't want to do it, they would shut us down. It also requires them if um, alcoholic beverages are going to be sold, mm -hmm. consumed, or present, mm -hmm. they have to have a liquor license for that. That's so all there's all there's all a lot to the answer <laughs> that has <laughs> Have y'all watched any of the videos of this? Yes, I have. All the drugs and the gunfire and everything, yeah. and hitting each other and running over each running other. over each other. Fifteen and, people and, and they don't the have any barriers, any rules. It's just completely yeah, well, there, there, there are some. Care. I know him. Yeah, I know him. There are some parts of this mass gathering permit also speak to um, individuals riding in vehicles or in the back of trucks, things of that nature. So there, there, it's it's pretty extensive, but it's going to give our sheriff's department some ability to enforce some things. Does it speak to security? Yes, it also speaks to security there. Security too. If they've got alcohol, they have to have security. Right? They have a 
pretend security guards. Well, yeah, sure. their own AK forces. Yeah. They have their own AK. And wear but, black but in any case, we we put this together. Bob Shells looked at it, and uh, I just want to make a motion that we uh, let's see how many word this. Can Can I speak to that for just a second? I don't yeah, know sure, go right ahead. I, I just I'm so apologize. I got over here from a different meeting, and I heard some things. In the back room back there, and I can't hear everything, but uh, I heard some things that we won't respond, and and there's there's some different things that uh, I feel a need to respond to. We respond to citizen complaints every day on any situation. <laughs> the difference is there has to be a law in place that will allow us to enforce whatever you believe is a violation. I live in this county as well, and if I lived in that area. I would be mortified with some of the activity that's taking place out there. You gonna be but out there we, Saturday? You, I'll be there Saturday. Yes, sir. I live there. Yes, sir. I'll to see us. And 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 it didn't. You know, the thing of it is, is we have to, no matter what we think or we desire, we have to operate under the law. Period. And if there's not a law against it, or there's not an ordinance we can enforce, our hands are sometimes tied. Now, in reference to the noise violations. The state law is eight for disorderly conduct is 85 decibel, 85 decibel reading on a meter. Right. So what does that mean? That means that neither I or any deputy working for me has the ability to listen and say, and our eyes register and say, that's 85. We can speculate whether or not it's above that, that reading or not. And they can ask for them to turn it down. But for, in order for us to enforce the law, we have to have a decibel meter there, take a reading, and it has to be 85 or above at that time, at that time. Now that doesn't matter, just to speak to that a second, that doesn't matter that when you, you know, doesn't mean that when you called it in, you're called to say, hey, this thing is excessive. It may have been above 85. Right. But when that officer gets there and he, he takes that reading and it is not above the state allowable reading of 85, he cannot take an enforcement action. He can't violate people's civil rights. Right. And that's one of the big things here is, no matter how putrid that, that situation out there may or may not be, we can't violate people's civil rights. So speaking to, that's the reason why I brought it to the commissioner's attention that, you know, I would like to see them move forward with adopting a mass gathering permit. The problem with the mass gathering permit, there's a problem with it as well, is I believe the number is 500. That doesn't give us any enforcement authority here because that's state law. We can't, there's not going to be 500 people out there. We can't sit there with a with like uh, attendants in church and say, there's two, five, 10, 20. But they do speak accurately to the fact that one of the things I brought up is to keep from violating people's civil rights, if they don't have, if they don't have a mass gathering permit, then and they're not violating the law, we don't even have the authority to go on their premises. How much money do the taxpayers want to spend in federal court because we violated somebody's civil rights? I kind of feel like our rights. Our rights. We understand right. you have rights as well. You have rights as well. You're telling right. why you can't when, do you, anything. Why don't you tell me what you can do? When did why we put a roadblock up and check every stinking car? You can't do that. Unlawful. You can't. I can answer that. that. You have I, a DHR in Dallas, and we get it all the time. You can't set up drug checkpoints. That's a violation of civil rights. You can't stop somebody without probable cause. That's a violation of civil so rights. What did you do? So we're going to enforce the law. It's not like you're helping these guys out. Hey, 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 everybody sells out. Excuse me, sir. Be civil about the it. The lady across the street is sitting there while they're doing this. I'm two blocks behind and it's screeching and screeching. She's across the street. Yeah. And this is going on for hours. Go sit on her porch and listen to it. They, they have and listen to it, and you will hear it, and it will be up 85 or more. I understand what your evaluation of that is. What I'm telling you is every time our officers respond to a complaint, mm -hmm. That's the first thing. They make a complaint. The they respond to the complaint. They go and take a decibel reading, and they document that decibel reading. If they can go inside and enforce it, they will do so. They've been instructed enforce the law of the state of Texas in any fashion you can. 
there's a reason why I heard something uh, uh, just a few minutes ago about a recent situation out there at that event where stolen vehicles were recovered. I believe the number was 16 people were arrested. There was numerous traffic stops and numerous violations and, and whatever the case may be. We didn't target that location. What we did is we stepped up enforcement in the area because of an anticipated overflow of traffic coming in and we want to protect the citizens. And in doing so, there were somewhere along 68 to 86 traffic stops, 16 arrests, I believe is the number or whatever. So that shows that potentially there could be a unwanted element coming into that community during those events. That's the reason why we're trying to get with the commissioner's court is working together to try to see if there's additional steps that can be taken and there's some things that are transpiring that we can't speak about over here. The sheriff's office understands that there's a problem out there. The commissioner's court understands that there's a problem out there. We would like to see, you know, this mass gathering permit, you know, the number be lowered to a more manageable and effective number. But I can't say that's lawful. I'm not an attorney for them to do that under a, an ordinance. But you got to start somewhere. And that's what we're doing. Every time, and you had a question was, will you be there Saturday? Absolutely. We've identified that there's an issue, and every time that they're out there, we're going to be there. I've already been there, like, I think someone said it took a year for me to come. That's not true. I've been out there numerous times, numerous times, including the other night, whenever, just because you don't see me. And just because I don't I don't get up on the fence and flap wings like a rooster crowing, it doesn't mean I'm out not doing enforcement operations and I'm not out because I am. But we owe it to our community, the people of Navarra Mills and the supporting citizens in Navarra County to prevent a criminal element from being out there and being active. So we're as long as I'm the sheriff, we're going to be out there trying to do what we can lawfully to protect the citizens and curtail that. That's why we reached out to the commissioner's court and said, can you get us something, a mass gathering permit, whatever the case may be, is there something that we can do to step up and beef up? Because as you say, and I understand it, the minute that deputy drives up and he takes a decibel reading and he says, it's not 85 right now, he can't sit out there for hours at a time because there's other calls going on in the county. He's going to move, <laughs> guess what's going to happen? As soon as he moves on, potentially the decimal meeting reading may exceed again. But that's like anything. If an officer is not present when the crime's committed, they conduct an investigation. So if citizens living in the area bought certified decibel readings, we would... can't operate oh. off of your reading. Okay. Now you can do that. Yeah. And when you call in, you can say, listen, we have a, you know, we took our own reading and right now it's at 87. That's all great. But we can't take an enforcement action based on what you saw on your decibel reading. Can I okay? say something real quick too? The thing of it is, is, is to take precautionary actions or take actions in front of that to try to be detrimental to them conducting those operations. Yeah. Yes, sure. Sure. Um, so is that decibel reading, is there a certain distance that you have to be away from something to, to well obviously you don't have the authority to enter their premises so we're going to we're going to take that reading as close to the entry point of that premises okay. or wherever the complainant is complaining from that's where we're going to take that reading but there's there's two different cars now one of them is twice as loud as some of them correct yeah. if we go there and one car is operational and we take a reading and it's 70 75 for <laughs> and then again, five minutes after we leave they bring another car off the trailer it doesn't have headers it's got headers and it's no mufflers or whatever but again it's as putrid as it is i don't want my guys to drive up out there and stay two minutes i want them to be present i want them to do what they can to and like i said people with common sense and that's what you're dealing with people don't have common sense that I want them to make contact and say, listen, we're getting complaints. Whether the decibel reading is above 85 or not, we're getting complaints on your situation yeah. out here, whether it's loud music, whether it's right. the cars, whatever. Can you do something to turn that down? Right. 
And the law actually says in that situation, when you do get out there and you determine that there's a decibel reading above the state law of 85, you have to contact someone and give them a warning yeah. before you can take enforcement action. I see there was a deputy come out there and he was doing it. And I told him, I said, they probably knew he was coming. Absolutely. Said, They're listening to scanners. Said, no, nobody knew I was even coming out there. <laughs> I can't speak to as many times as we've been there. I can't speak to one individual officer's action or, or whatever, but I can tell you that I know from being in a narcotic arena for many years and working in enforcement that people do listen to scanners and they do, you know, that even when said dispatched across the radio, sometimes people do take action to, you know, to turn the radios down or whatever the case may be. Got a question back here. I, about I just had a question about the ordinance. It was asked whether or not it included a provision on security. Is that security going to be, you know, T-close? Or is it going, a, a certified Texas peace officer? Or is it just going to be whoever they hire to stand out there with their AK-47s? Because it sounds like they've already got security. Mm -hmm. They just have a different that's vision a, of security. <laughs> than, than that's that's a good question. Uh, and, it's, I don't and know. it'd be great if the sheriffs could get some OT and go out there and require these people to uh, actually have TCO certified peace officers out there to observe and enforce what's going on. Not only that, it adds credibility if they happen to reach out to their counterparts uh, at the sheriff's department and say, look, you know, this is the situation out here, but if it's just some guy that's got a, a, a T-shirt that says security. Uh, I, will, uh, I, have, I haven't read that far in the code. These things are that thick, but I will research that and find out. Oh, I should, so, yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. So, uh, listen, the permit would only uh, come into force if someone intends to have a festival if there's day and 10, there's going to be more than 500 people there. That's if they intend to have a pastor, have a big party, or take money at the gate, but oh, yeah, we got no idea that many people will show up. And the sheriff, yeah. unlike a fire marshal, the fire marshal can go into a place and say, hey, there's too many people here, shut it down. Yeah. So, but the sheriff is saying if they intend to have 300 people there and 600 people show up, the same behavior. Well, the sheriff doesn't have any way of coming in and shutting it down. The permit requires them <laughs> to estimate the number that's going to be present, and it also requires them for a plan to limit that to that number. And if it goes over that number, my understanding is the sheriff does have the authority to shut it down at that point. As they haven't met the requirements of the permit, they've turned it. So, if you're going to have a party in the pasture and you're collecting money at the gate and there's going to be alcohol, we don't really care how many people are coming. That's the way the permit is looking to be like having a pop up party. We don't really care how many people you think are going to come here. If you're taking money at the gate, you're going to be selling alcohol out there in the pasture. If your people shoot guns, you need a permit. Period. Well, because the fire marshal's got signs up that says only so many people are allowed in this room. And you can call the fire marshal. They'll come and say, shut this down. But, but you're saying that if only somebody intends to have 500 people, right? then, then that's when they have to go and get a phone. According to the code, is that, that right, Mr. Shell? Is that correct, Mr. Shell? According, according to the code, it's got to be over 500. Well, that's correct, but the point is, if they anticipate more than 500, then they have to uh, make application for a permit. Well, they're not going to do that. Well, but, excuse me, the, uh, you know, I've seen the uh, videos <laughs> that they post on their own website. Uh, I haven't seen one of those videos where there's less than 500 people. Amen. Uh, this facility will be subject to this ordinance. If they don't get a permit, uh, the sheriff has authority to uh, investigate that mass gathering. Can I ask, how would you be able to lower that number from 500 to say 300? I don't, I don't think, yeah. You'd have to go to the state legislature. Yeah. From six so seven different states. This is a, as far as yeah, they come from everywhere. If I may, this is a state law. 
This is uh, under the Health and Safety Code, Chapter 751. It's a state law that gives the county judge and the sheriff uh, the authority to enforce these regulations. What year was those laws put in force? Oh, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look and see when the law was passed. Thank you. May I expand on her question? I understand that's a state law, but where does county ordinance come here? Can the county develop its own ordinance like a city develops ordinances against trash or whatever? Is there such a thing as a county creating an ordinance that's enforceable and make that number where, the, where you desire it to be? Uh, right off the top of my head, uh, I'd have to research that, but the general rule of law is a municipality can make any ordinance or draft any regulations that don't violate the law. The county can only do those things which are authorized, it's authorized to do by the state legislature. And I don't know of any authorization where the county commissioners can draft that type of word. For instance, the uh, zoning regulations around the lake, those are all authorized by the state legislature. The county can only do what the state legislature says you can do. So I'm this would be I'm, a deal for to contact the state rail. Yes. And this would be even bigger. This is a state matter. Pardon? But it's even bigger than it's really a state matter. Like, in terms of um like um in terms of any of these poor people suffering and the violations that are we're discussing. And I mean if I'm hearing it correctly, how do you how do you combat that, right? Because I think everyone's in agreement that it's wrong. Um so is it more of a state argument than a state um case? Versus a commissioner's court case. Well, we're, we're just only the number. If we're seeking relief, do we go to the state for more than the county? Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank if, you if, if you want these numbers to be lowered, uh, you would have to go to your state legislatures and lobby them to amend this law to lower the numbers. Because it would have to be that this statute would have to be amended to lower those numbers. Statewide. Yeah, it would be a statewide. <laughs> statewide, it wouldn't be, be just for Nevada County. Yeah. Well, Saturday morning out on Sunrise Circle, there was somebody out there with it sounded like a bump stop, a uh, heavy, heavy rifle with a bump stop. So you're saying the sheriff, that would be an ATF law, right? You, you don't, you can't enforce that? No, I'm not saying that. Oh, okay. Well, That's it, nonsense. I'm saying anytime you hear gunfire like that, we and you call to make a complaint, we're going to respond to that, but it doesn't mean it's a violation of the law. You live in the county and there's no ordinance against firing your weapon in the unincorporated Colorado County. Uh, automatic weapon or, or a bump stock, those are illegal under the alcohol back and forth. Again, so, that's that's something we would respond to. And if we determination a law, mm -hmm. a lawful violation has occurred then we will take the action if we can enforce it to get that in the appropriate hands of say ATL or, or whoever. So if it is illegal to shoot uh, a rifle or a machine gun or whatever you want to call it, uh, less than 50 acres, that is a, it's in the law books. So if that's a law being broken, that's something you can't enforce, then who do we contact to enforce that? Is it, I don't know, game warden? We call game warden actors. They okay. shoot them nonstop. Okay, so you're telling me that it is a state law that you can't discharge a firearm unless you have in an unincorporated area, unless you have you got to have 10 acres for a pistol and a firm, and you got to have 50 acres for a rifle or anything with a rifle. Now, are you speaking to having a range? Or no, you're talking about firing. You can't a deer hunt on 10 acres. You can't shoot a deer rifle on 10 acres. You got to have. <laughs> Hmm. I'd look it up. It's there. It's all here. Would that be? that be? Because I need to familiarize myself with that. Okay. I'll show you. And there's a representative of the DA's office here. Are you familiar with that, sir? No, not off the top of my head. Well, you know, the sad thing is, uh, I'm a retired firefighter, and the sad thing is, you move out in that community because that's what you want. You want your peace, quiet, tranquility. Agreed. And 
that we didn't move next to door to a racetrack. They inserted themselves in the community and they are disrupting us. They have rights, we don't. Same doesn't thing make sense, it doesn't add up. Same thing with the big one. They're doing the same thing. Yeah. And then they say, well, it's outside city limits. We can do whatever we want. It's private property. We can do whatever we want. What about your rights? What about your property? You don't have it. Same, same thing with a solar farm or yeah. a windmill or exactly. whatever. If you don't want to see it or whatever, but you live there and it comes in, here you are. You where, are your, where are your rights? Where right. are your, you know, it's not she does that. Right. Yeah, I hate them. Well, when y'all were talking about the windows <laughs> rattling, they growl. They growl 24 7. I just want to make one little statement and then I, and I apologize to the court because I know this is not proper etiquette in this situation. Make no mistake about it. I understand. What you folks are saying, ma'am, and ma'am, I understand what you folks are saying, and I believe 100% that what everything you're saying is accurate as far as that is a nuisance. Right. That location, right. it is creating disorderly conduct in the communities, it is enticing a potential criminal element to come into the community that is not wanted in our county, right. and I can assure you this that we at the sheriff's office, I as the sheriff am going to take whatever steps that are lawful that we can take to be able to, see how I would say that, relieve some of the pain that you're having out there. The first step was about two or three weeks ago when we had a successful operation out there to deter the criminal element from coming in there. That is not the last time you'll see us. We will be there again Saturday if it occurs, and we will continue coming. The thing for you folks, and I, I think you understand this, and, and yeah, I will not get a bit of feedback. When we, excuse me, when we bring in all these additional assets, they're being paid over to as a, that is a you're incurring the taxpaying citizens are incurring the expense of all these officers coming in. And it affects more than just the ones you see. You see the patrol division right. that's being staffed with additional detectives because we're using two man units for officer safety. In the correctional division, when you arrest 16 people in an eight hour period, that's going to, you know, that's going to roll over onto you as well from the manpower, overtime, feeding, clothing, medical expenses, and all those things, and additional dispatch officers. But that's what we do. We're here to take whatever steps are necessary to keep you safe. And so as long as it is, is they're having events there and potential, we don't mind them having events. As long as there's potential criminal activity and breaches of the peace and violations of the law, we're going to be responding to it. And that's one thing that this, this mass gathering permit will do as a person saying, you can't come on our premises. This is a lawful gathering. You can't come on these premises. If, if there's something that violates this, the attorney in the room can tell you that it gives us a lawful right to enter those premises, and then we can deal with anything that we observe. The question of it is, is being able to lawfully enter that premises and not violate their civil rights. And that's where this comes in. And I'm here to tell you, I understand where you're coming from. I fully understand that community out there. My sister used to live in a house right across the street from her. So I understand. And we're going to be there with you. And we're going to take whatever, do whatever we can lawfully to ensure that you don't continue to have heartache from what's taking place out there. Well, they got to put up with it. Yeah. And our value of our property. There, there's no matter. Let me, let, me, let me again say this to you. There's some things right now that are taking place as we speak right. that I can't speak to in right. this room right. and the attorney can't speak to in this room right now. Right. I simply say this, and this is easy to say and hard to digest. Right. Be patient just a little bit longer yeah. because yeah. once it occurs, you will know it and you'll say, that's what they were talking about that day. That's it. You'll say, you know, so just, just, 
understand we understand we're all in here's the thing we're all in this together right we all have a common goal and i, I can just tell you right. just be patient just a little bit longer I'm and I'll see y'all on Saturday. I just want to thank you because every conversation you and I have, everything that you told me that what you were going to do, you have done it. And I know you right. got some bad feedback. Yes, every deputy, I mean, we've got to be friends with the deputy because, you know, they come to us and they're there and stuff. And last time, you know, my neighbor, she woke up from a nap and that's when her road got swarmed because a neighbor in the corner was um, allowing people to park in, yes. their, oh, yes. in their property and they, they um they were charging they were the park, park on the public road. I'm the one that was in the yard. I was in the yard. I was in the yard. I literally was talking cars in the middle telling them to turn around because, you know, and all the, you know, it's just crazy, you know, and I shouldn't have to do that, you know, but I'm going to protect my neighbors. I don't care how sick I am, but I don't matter. I'll go up the road and take care of my neighbors. And, I appreciate that so I much. Thank you. I mean, you know, I know y'all don't get Best feedback, but every time, you know, in the beginning, our first conversation was the greatest, but ever since then, you have been, I appreciate every, every it. Word, your deputies have been, I have no problem with your deputies. I said we've become friends because, you know, the same ones are out there and have been a lot, but I just want to say I appreciate it. He said, well, went for y'all, something bad would have happened. And I'm just thankful that nothing has happened to any of your deputies or any of us that live out there. I appreciate it so much. Because one thing I'll never do is lie to you. What I say I'll do, I'll do. Because integrity means everything in the world to me, and those deputies represent me, so they know what I anticipate from them. And and just like that, as foolish as that is, they had the as you said, the people that live in that community could not even get safely home because of the traffic out there, and they were charging people to park in the county road. Yep. But when but when we but when we called for ten records, and we started in citations. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't hear us saying, you better get that road unblocked and get those vehicles off this public road. They couldn't hear us until 10 records pulled up and those deputies started writing citations. And then all of a sudden, guess what? Yep. Boom, the roadway is clear. Yep. So we're in this with you. We're here for you. And we're going to do exactly what I'm telling you right now we're going to do. And that is we're going to ease your pain. Okay. 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 One statement before. Real quick, before you leave. Texas Local Government Code 229.002. This is for long guns and, and pistols and acreage requirements. Also, Texas Local Government Code 42.021 and 235.022. And then also, um, Texas Penal Code 42.12. 235, I'm sorry. 235.022. So it's 229.022. And then 42.021 and 235.022. I can assure you that I will be reviewing that and speaking with our district attorney's office to see what is enforceable and what action we can take. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll make one statement before I make a motion to uh, approve this mass gathering permit. Um, I think you see the difficulties that we have dealing with the state codes, they don't allow us to do some things. And I deeply regret if I communicated to you, Ms. Witt, that I didn't want to do anything. I've been concerned about this since the beginning. Okay, it's just that your comment on our first conversation, and I and I know you just came yeah. to the office, and I know you were this, because when I talked to you about other things, you said you did not know what you were getting yourself into. And I gave you, <laughs> I gave you, 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 I this is a way or a beginning to to get this get this done. So I make a motion that we approve this mass gathering permit application system. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Brewer, seconded by Commissioner Grant. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Seventeen. Thank, thank y'all for your input. Yeah. Uh, just one suggestion. Uh, if you would amend your motion to have an effective date, 60 days oh, from yes. this date. Yes. Uh, because uh, you've got to give that 60 day notice yes. because uh, anybody who applies for this has a 
45 day window to make their application before the event. Um, so, um, do, do I need to, can I amend the motion or do I need to make a new motion? Just make, make a new motion. I think okay. that'd be better. I make a motion that our mass gathering permit application system go into effect on May the 1st. Is that plenty of time, Bob? That's up to date. It has to be 60 Oh, okay. May 11th. Effective 60 days. Uh, so, uh, okay. I, I follow you now. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I make a motion that we uh, approve this mass gathering permit application as of today, March the 11th, and with a 60 day window for anyone wanting to have a mass gathering event uh, to go into effect. <laughs> So my question is, so today it starts, they is, can apply. They can apply starting today. Starting today, and they have 60 days in order to. Be it has, they cannot, we cannot. And 45. Yeah, it's, it's 45 or 60 days. They have to make the application prior to the event, 45 days prior to the event. And if they don't make it within that time, it can't be approved. Got it. Yeah. Do they know about this? It's, it's going to be put on our website. I will post something on the guy's gate out there. Okay. Uh, to that effect, and we'll make sure we'll make sure it's communicated. Yeah. Uh, the owner and the guy that's leasing the property. As part of the permit application, the property owner and the organizer slash promoter, they both have to be a part of the permit application. It might be a good idea to contact TCEQ because they got steel balls. They will shut you down to the littlest thing. Mm -hmm. You got any kind of sewer going on the ground, they will come out here and lock the gate. There are, is anyone, there are there porta potties out there or are they no. just going on the ground? They're going in wood. Yeah. Brown. They and, and according to several residents that have called me, they're going on their property by their house. Oh, I wouldn't know whose house those are. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, we need that. That's so gross. TCEQ will definitely come out. Did you second it, Jason? Jason second it. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. That modification has been uh, made by Commissioner Brewer. Uh, again, Mr. Grant, Commissioner Grant had seconded. And so all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. That's a unanimous vote. Okay. It has to be in writing. Come into the ground and check and see. According to Sheriff Tanner, that's correct. And the other question is, we use rough drones, so nothing would stop anybody from going on public roads and flying a drone over the bed. And all. the other day, uh, I heard, I heard, now the hollow music wasn't that loud, and I heard lots and lots of going, going whispers. Oh, I thought, what's going on over there? Because way back on somebody's land, I thought, well, let's go to the flying drone overhead and see what, what's happening here. And I just wanted to bet that, that it doesn't violate anybody's rights, does it? I, I don't yeah. know the answer to that. That would but actually have a good. You can fly drones over the property and see what you're doing better. So you don't have to be hamstrung by a notion that we violated somebody's rights to go on their property and see what they're doing. The sheriff would just fly a drone from right there to the road and fly over the drone overhead and take pictures of those happens. There are actually a lot of laws that regulate law enforcement flying drones. Yeah, there's a lot of them. That's, I don't have, I, I, I don't have any information. That's the sheriff's department. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Uh, item 17 is consideration of approving the declaration for the April 8, 2024 eclipse. And so let me read this. It's pretty lengthy, um, but maybe I can get through it. Uh, whereas on April 8th, 2024, Navarro County, Texas, will be in the direct line of uh, total solar eclipse that will traverse across North America. And whereas this event is expected to see the population uh, of Navarro County, Texas, which is approximately 100,000, uh, double, if not triple, in size throughout the days leading up to and including the day of the event leading to extreme traffic congestion 
enormous strain on first responders, uh, organizations, hospital systems, food, grocery, and fuel shortages, uh, along with city and county infrastructure, threatening the safety of all residents. And whereas the Navarra County judge has determined that extraordinary measures must be taken to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Navarra County residents and visitors that may be impacted as the result of the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse. And whereas the Navarra County judge in consultation with area emergency management, eh, let me say that again, emergency management coordinators, law enforcement officials and fire and rescue officials have determined that uh, a potential exists for roads, streets, highways to be stressed to and above capacity during the uh, certain times of the event. Uh, whereas the potential stress and over capacity of city, county, state, and federal streets, roads, and highways may create a public safety event whereby law enforcement and fire and rescue officers will be in, impeded from responding to calls for such services. And whereas the Navarra County judge has determined that a registration process for property owners in the unincorporated areas of the county who intend to rent, lease, or otherwise allow their property to be used for solar uh, eclipse viewing is in the best interest of the public safety. And whereas the Navarra County judge urges all residents of Navarro County to stay at home if they can <laughs> avoid driving uh, if possible ensure all vehicles are filled with fuel the week leading up to the event ensure sufficient groceries and supplies are purchased well in advance uh, and to take all necessary uh, cautionary measures to ensure the safety of all persons and animals in their care now, therefore, be uh, declared by Navarro County that, number one, pursuant to section 418.08 uh, or 108, I'm sorry, uh, Texas Government Code and local state of emergency and disaster, uh, a local state of emergency and disaster to be caused by the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse event is hereby declared for Navarro County, Texas. Two, uh, that pursuant to section 418.089, 1089B of the government code, this state of emergency for April 8th of 2024 solar eclipse event shall continue for a period of not more than seven days from the date of this declaration uh, unless extended by Navarro County Commissioner's Court of Navarro County, Texas. Not through yet. Three, that pursuant to section 418.108D of the government code, this declaration activates the Navarro County Emergency Management Plans and authorizes the furnishing of aid and assistance under this declaration. Four, that this declaration authorizes Navarro County to take any actions necessary to promote life, safety, and critical infrastructure protection, uh, including but not limited to requiring private property landowners in the unincorporated areas of Navarro County, Texas, to register with Navarro County if that landowner plans to host watch parties, dry camping, or any other large event that exceeds a population of 50 or more people. Uh, these same private property landowners will provide Navarro County with the plans uh, that describe the layout of the event, clearly marketing or marking um, number of spaces to be used for dry camping and parking areas, ingress and egress routes leading in and out of the private property, uh, designated routes, in and out of the private property for first responder emergency vehicles and ensuring compliance uh, for those who do not comply with uh, the county's rules and directives. That number five, that this declaration shall take effect from March 11, 2024 and after 
its issuance and upon approval of Navarro County Commissioner's Court shall continue in effect until determined uh, or terminated by Navarro County Judge. Uh, pursuant to this declaration, additional directives may be issued by Navarro County Judge at any time deemed necessary. I had, I had this, uh, I had this put on. Here. I have a drink for that, okay? Yeah. I had this put on here because some of us went to an emergency management meeting here a couple of weeks ago on this, mm -hmm. and it sounds crazy. I mean, it's something not like out of a movie, but some of the counties and other places that have gone through this have said all kinds of things that. You know, you should have your groceries and water and gas bought by April the 4th because you may run out. Uh, cell service will be spotty at best. That people just stop in the middle of the highway, the interstate, they'll park in any open parking spot anywhere, at any school, any church, any store, whatever. They'll do their number one and number two business wherever they can. They leave trash everywhere. Uh, drug use goes up by 400% on that day. They abandon vehicles that the most of the mom and pop stores and restaurants they close for the day so only the chain restaurants will be open and they'll they'll probably run out of food i know it all sounds like a apocalypse but we don't know what to expect uh it said it could that our population could go anywhere from two to four hundred thousand people you know i don't know that any of this is going to happen but if you have this in place and something something does happen I believe this makes it easier for you to get resources from the state to assist us if we need it. So I know it sounds crazy, but it may be crazy. And then again, you know, maybe nothing will happen, but better to be prepared for it. And of course, it, it also makes you wonder about if you're trying to get those resources from the state, how are they going to get here? <laughs> I mean, if all the highways are going to be blocked by people sitting out there with like welding hoods or whatever glasses they may, you know, purchase to, to be able to view the event. How are we going to get help here? Well, you know, another thing we need to think about, like I know some of the schools have closed already. We have, all, all of them we have commissioner's court that day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's that morning. Okay. Yeah. This eclipse is going to happen around one o'clock. You can't get here. There you go. You can't get here. You can't get here. You know. So. Anyway, something to think about. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate you. <laughs> okay. I, I read an article of what happened in 2017 in Kentucky, and it was mass pandemonium. Hundreds of thousands of cars on and off the main highways when the interstates get clogged they hit the county roads and 50,000 people have the same idea at the same time yeah. and so the county roads are clogged then they follow google earth <laughs> those roads don't exist yeah yeah, yeah. so yesterday we need to stop that yeah and anybody that needs to leave if you want to leave that's fine i mean i don't know a bunch of you are already and that's okay but that's okay i mean or you can stay i mean all right, we need a motion on this, gentlemen. Please. I make a motion that we approve the declaration for the April 8, 2024 solar eclipse. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Please sign it. We move from on deck to the back. Sir. Okay, number what was that? That was the solar eclipse. Number 18 is consideration of approving the tax collection report for February of 2024. Mr. Mike Dow, our successor collector. Morning, now. You have the floor, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. All right. Total collections to date. Uh, so far, $26,456,427.87, which is ahead of last year at this time, dollars and cents wise, of $25,386,720.14. That's a million $69,707.73, more than it was last year. Percentage-wise, we're behind just a little bit, 4.73%. Last year, at this time, we had collected 90.43. Today, we've collected 85.7. But back to the million dollars ahead. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Good deal. 
All right, need a motion to accept the uh, approve this tax collection report, I'll please. A I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the tax collection report of February 2024 by Mike Second. Motion made by Commissioner Perry, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 19 is consideration of accepting payment in lieu of taxes from Pisky Ridge Solar LLC in the amount of $131,000, um, $131,250. Excuse me, I'll get it right here in a minute. I, I move that we accept payment in lieu of taxes from Pisgah Ridge Solar LLC in the amount of $131,250. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Moore, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion. Show me the money. Let me have it. Take it. Uh, number 20 is consideration of accepting payment in lieu of taxes from Pisgah Ridge Solar LLC in the amount of, I don't know why they're doing this in two different checks, but I'm sure there's a reason, of $91,750. I move that we accept payment in lieu of taxes from Pisgah Ridge Solar LLC in the amount of $91,750. Second. Is that you, Mr. Perry? Thank you, sir. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, well, let me back up. Motion's been made by Commissioner Moore, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 21 is consideration of declaring portable radios and miscellaneous items as salvage for our uh, Navarro County Sheriff's Office. And there's a list attached to it somewhere, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not, anyway. So we need a motion on that. that Make is. a motion that we Thank declare you. the portable radios and miscellaneous items as salvage for the Nevada County Sheriff's Office. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Brewer, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 22 is consideration of declaring the listed item for Nevada County Office of Emergency Management as salvage, and there's also an attached list for that. And I will make that motion since I'm part of emergency management and would ask for a second. Second. No, motion made by Judge Davenport, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Y'all notice we can't just throw stuff away. No, we have to prove it. Has, it has away. to come through court. <laughs> One of the things that Austin says we have to do. So and it may be junk. Do you, do you publish those lists? Yes. Thank you. I've never Clark, been able to find yeah. some things. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Yeah, you might want to come buy some of our junk. No. <laughs> just, I'm maybe. just curious. No, okay. Uh, number 23 is consideration of approving a variance of the Richland Chambers <laughs> Lake Shore Area Zoning Ordinance for the placement of a residence in Maddie Gaston Shores uh, phase two, lot 9D uh, to CMH Homes Inc. What is this bell, Stan? Good morning, gentlemen. Yeah, it's uh, Matty Casson. Uh, basically, he's asking for at the placement of the home, which will be approach on the one of the side easements, like the utility easements, about one foot, and the building line in the front by I think five, like five, maybe six feet that the home was set into. PNC met on this on March the 7th and had no issue with it. They were, uh, what, and what they're asking is commercial courts blessing also. I mean, PNC had no no issue with it at all. So it passed, and, it passed PNC. Yeah. Yes, and they're not, like they, they, they have to ask commercial court for final approval. Uh, they're doing the same thing. And I'll make a motion of approving the variance of the Richardson Chambers Lake Shore Area Zoning Ordinance for the place of placement of a residence in Madagascan Shores, Phase 2, Lot 9D, to C at MH Homes Incorporated. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Perry, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 24 is consideration of approving a zoning district 
change from agriculture to industrial for Grand Solar Texas 17 LLC. Yes, sir. And this is the uh, one of the ladies back here was speaking on earlier. It was brought to P and Z also on March 7th. It was uh, brought up by members of that committee that they w wish to deny that. And during that that vote, we had six against it and two for it, but it did fail to make anything from that point on. It, it is on commissioner's court this morning to, in case the commissioner's court had any questions on it, uh, they can actually act on it independently from PNZ if they need to. Mm -hmm. But well, like I say, it's, it's basically, it did fail and did not get it. Where, where is this located? This is going to be, uh, right. the best way that I can describe it is, uh, you know, where Sunday Bancroft stuff is over on east. the east side of the lake over there, North Shore, Mission, Bella Vista. Oh, yeah. Okay. That area yeah. is going to go, yeah. it would actually border Bella Vista subdivision. Mm -hmm. The property line would, would, they would share a property line. Okay. And it's really, What's the property really, ID for that property? Uh, I had that pulled out of my head. I don't have that that There's document with me. It's, it's, it's actually three. It's actually three tracks that's involved, and uh, there's some confusion. I called the appraisal district on one of them because mm -hmm. two two of the tracks end with five one, and they and the county road splits right down the center, so it cannot. I don't think it cannot have the same tax ID number shared between the two properties. It's hard to identify for example. If there are three tracks. Yeah, if there's three tracks involved. If you look up the owner's name, though, we can find them. Yes, that owner's name. Oh, that one we have looking at. Is that what the old current landfill was? No. Okay. But anyway, it did not make sense. Congress with the PNC, they, they denied it. Judge, there was, uh, I was at that meeting and there was a lot of opposition to this. And what I'd like to do is just not approve this. Uh, and I'll make a motion of not approving the zoning district change to agriculture to industrial for Grand Solar, Texas 17 LLC. Second. 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 All right, this is to not approve. Um, motion made by Commissioner Perry, seconded by Commissioner Grant. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 26 is consideration of approving the final plat of Segovia addition for Ruben Segovia. We need 25, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I did miss it. Uh, <laughs> thank you for noticing. Uh, Consideration number 25 is consideration <clears throat> proving your final plan of Barry Countryside Acres for what season? I think it's funding. I think it's how they pronounce it. Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to involve six tracks. They're asking Commissioner's Court uh, for approval. Both tracks exceed the, the one acre minimum net uh, lot sizing. For septic system purposes, they do meet state and local regulations for subdivisions. They have all their utility letters uh, from the water uh, electrical providers stating that they, they are, they do have access to it. They will be provided utilities. Um, it does contain two private roads. They named one Berry Countryside, uh, Berry Country Drive. The other is very country court. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. again, they're, they're asking permission to court this morning for approval for their subdivision. There are deed restrictions involved in it. Okay. And and I think the smallest lot is about four acres. Almost, five, acres. almost five acres. Almost five acres. Wow. Uh, and then the, there was a five acre, four acre, what I remember, four acre, five acre. And a reminder, uh, the other four were 10 acres of the And they're, they're asking for four per okay. And they're up keeping those private roads through. Yes, on the flat itself, it has that statement that it's, it's uh, up to the private landowners to maintain those roads. 
No, we need a motion, General. I'll make a motion that we approve the final plat for Barry Countryside Acres for our funding group. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Now, number 26, consideration of approving final plan of Segovia addition for Ruben Segovia. Spanish? Yes, and we, we previously visited this one on prior years before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 10, 10, uh, 10 tracks involved in it. They're all like to again, it, it meets the state and local regulations for septic systems uh, and uh, subdivision requirements and statutes. They also have the letter from the utilities company saying that they will be providing water and electricity to uh, sewage facilities unless they will fit within the properties for the one acre net minimum. And they uh, they do have a set of deed restrictions this time to go around for commission to uh, consider. It. They're also asking for commission for approval as well. Okay. This is the same one we kicked back for the deed restriction a couple of weeks ago. Ooh. I'll make a mo motion of approving the final plan of Segovia addition by the region of Segovia. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Farron, seconded by Commissioner Brewer. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jim. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stan. Number 27 is consideration of approving application for Texoma Hire for federal assistance. Uh, SF-424 for 2024. Terry? Mrs. Thayer, um, agreement for FY20 card for their calendar year 24 asking for federal assistance. And, and we, we do the housekeeping for them, so to speak. Or, so it's not really anything that any of us have, of the public has anything to do with, but it's just the commissioner's court does that uh, bookkeeping, so to speak. All right, uh, given that, I need a motion uh, on number 27, please. I move to approve an application for Texoma Hida for Federal Assistance SF-424 for 20, 2024. Second. Motion been made by Commissioner Moore, seconded by Commissioner Grant. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 28 is consideration of approving Chatfield water supply to cross Northeast County Road 2190 in Precinct 2. Mr. Perry. Yes, sir. Judge, this is a standard road for application to get water from one side of the road to the other. Gotcha. And I'll make a motion of approving Chatfield water to cross East North, Northeast 2190 in Precinct 2. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Perry, seconded by Commissioner Brewer. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. 29 is consideration of approving to pay one invoice for animal care clinic without a purchase order for Navarra County Sheriff's Office. Looks like this was for a rabies test on an animal. Make a motion we approve to pay the invoice for animal care clinic without purchase order for the Navarra County Sheriff's Office. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Brewer, seconded by Commissioner Moore. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 30 is consideration of approving to pay one invoice for a Warren tire without a purchase order for precinct one. That's mine. I'll make a motion we approve to pay one invoice for tire, Warren tire without purchase order for precinct one. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Grant, seconded by Commissioner Perry. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, number 31 is executive session pursuant to the Texas Government Code, section 551.074, to discuss personnel. To ask for a motion to go into that. Gentlemen. It is 1142 a.m. on March 11th, 2024. I'll make a motion that we go into executive session uh to uh code section 551.074 to discuss personnel second motion made by commissioner brewer seconded by commissioner moore all in favor please say aye uh, aye thank you all for coming
They do don't. If you have some candy, candy lunch, candy snacks, I've got some candy. Oh, we get a roll of that hang down off the chair. You know, let everybody have that much tea. Crackers. I eat that many a time. In three minutes. Nearly everybody stayed within the three minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sitting here watching my clock and out. Yeah, I'll let you go. <laughs> yes, yes, that is important. So it is is getting the air clear of you know, what was going on. I expect you to come back again. Yeah. Oh, I do. I do. I, I, I actually thought we were going to be working on the new shopping. Uh, no, 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 not yet. No, no, we wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. The city. The city. The city. Yeah. Now, I think there will be a tax of, you know, yeah, we've done approval. The, we've done the TIF. Yeah. We approved the TIF. So, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, now the city will do it. And y'all will do the next time. Yes, we'll probably do it the next time. Yeah. So. Good to see you. I, I walked into one. Oh, well, boy, you walked into the wrong one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> but it was interesting. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know uh, that waste truck. Well, man, that guy, been, I mean, we've been, been dealing with it how long? We've been sure Since last first first of the year. Yeah. Oh, has it been even longer than that? Yeah, it, it really started up in the summer. Land. Thank you, guys. Gosh, you know what? And I, there's not much we can do because yeah. with cities, I didn't know about it at all. The yeah. cities can do ordinances, but we can't. Yeah. Counties can't. You betcha. We're not allowed to by the state. Yeah. I think now this is a thing that we can do. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, mass they, gathering fields. But that kind of also kind of falls under emergency management, too, because you don't yeah. have a lot of people in there that can really get in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> All right. I'll let y'all do that. I'm Thank glad you. it's you and not me. Uh, here, county judge, right? So you sign here. Here. Uh -huh. And then put today's date there. 311. Okay. This is the original that goes back to the federal government. Sure. Yeah. Still recording? I think so. Yeah. Then I will return it from Yeah. Now I'm not it shows. This doesn't make sense. I don't even know if that whole thing was recorded or not. We got a feeling there was somebody out there recording. Yeah, there's somebody here doing it. Yeah. The camera is on, but I don't know that it was recording. Huh. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Jared went to court one time over a ticket he got, and he was pulling out of 